Here we are, on top of the stars Never thought we'd ever get this far We live for moments like this We come alive in moments like this Here we are, this is a turn Like a dream coming to life We live for moments like this We come alive in moments like this Through my head I try to capture it But a picture can't hold What a heart is feeling I just wanna stop the world from spinning Slow it all down for a minute So that I can take it in I can take it in Here we are, on top of the stars Never thought we'd ever get this far
sun, we are the sun. We are the young ones with a heart of fire. We are the sun, we are the sun. We are the young ones with a heart of fire. We are the sun, we are. Feel it under the open sky. Hearts beat and we come alive.
let's spend a little time together
been trying to do it right I've been living a lonely life I've been sleeping here instead I've been sleeping in my bed Sleeping in my bed So show me family All the blood that I will bleed I don't know where I belong I don't know where I went wrong But I can write a song I belong with you You belong with me in my sweet heart I belong with you You belong with me in my sweet heart
Pace University welcomes you to the College of Health Professions virtual celebration. Hello, class of 2020. I'm Dr. Harriet Feldman, Dean of the College of Health Professions, and I welcome you to our virtual graduation celebration. While the COVID-19 pandemic has forced us to gather in remotely this year, we remain closely bonded to each other as we celebrate this milestone in your professional journey. Though we are still in a period of uncertainty, I'm very proud of the way you have come together in the spirit of community to support and uplift each other. Many of you are already on the front lines caring for patients. Others are preparing to join the ranks. This global pandemic has taken much from us. The camaraderie of classmates, our jobs, and even most devastating, the lives of those we love or care for. But in return, it has given us an unwavering desire to band together. Faculty, students, and alumni alike, with resilience and compassion to stop the spread of this deadly disease, and that is cause to celebrate indeed. This year marks the College of Health Professions 10th anniversary as a leader in healthcare education, growing from 900 students to, to more than 1,600 this year. We're proud of our programs that span numerous growing and important areas of study. <clears throat> Nursing, physician assistant, communication sciences and disorders, occupational therapy, nutrition and dietetics, and health science. Today, you are graduating from a college that continues to shape in ways changing, advancing healthcare landscape. And today you become part of that legacy. I'm very proud of the work of faculty and staff to bring quality learning experiences to each of our students, especially this past semester when everyone was adjusting to new remote learning platforms. I am equally pleased knowing that each of you will leave here with the knowledge and skills you need to make a difference in your fields and communities. You have worked very hard to complete your degrees and I will definitely, it will definitely make a difference in your lives. As a young professional, I was privileged to have mentors to guide me in my career path and to encourage me to continue my education. I graduated with a nursing diploma from a hospital program, not from a university. I took risks in advancing my education and sought experiences that helped me grow as a person. So many possibilities were in my future, just as there are for each of you. At each step of the way, someone came along and presented a new door that I could open if I was willing to enter, and it was. These many years later, I am Dean of this remarkable College of Health Professions at Pace University, nothing I ever could have imagined. Of course, it didn't happen overnight, but I'm convinced that it never would have happened without opening the doors and seizing the opportunities that presented themselves. So my sage advice to you <clears throat> is to close your eyes and envision an amazing career and a lifetime of great possibilities. Then put one foot in front of the other as you take the steps toward your goal. I'm confident that as you create your futures, you will continue to make the faculty and staff here at Pace and the College of Health Professions very proud. We greatly value our alumni and are proud to count you now among them. As you move forward, new degree in hand to embark on your own professional journey, I urge you to stay in touch with us. We look forward to hearing about your accomplishments as you pursue your careers as proud graduates of Pace University. We look forward to welcoming you back for celebrations and special events, and especially to serve as a mentor and role model for future generations of students. Finally, our motto, Opportunitas, is a genuine reflection of the myriad opportunities in healthcare that, healthcare, that the healthcare field offers. As highly skilled and compassionate healthcare professionals, your opportunities truly are limitless. Today, I urge each of you to use your education to explore those opportunities as you work to enrich your own life and the lives of those you care for. You have a strong foundation on which to build. Remember, always, that each of you is the architect of a promising and meaningful future. 
You are the College of Health Professions. You are PACE. Be safe. Be well. I wish you the best of luck in all you do. Now I'd like to introduce a very talented student singer, Alyssa Chambers, for the National Anthem. Oh, say can you see Stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming. Thank you so much, Alyssa, for that beautiful performance. We are now going to hear from our three student speakers. We will begin with Heather Farley, the undergraduate student speaker from New York City, followed by Brent Cameron, the undergraduate student speaker from Pleasantville, and finally from our graduate student speaker, Tandika Stevens de Clemente. Hello, class of 2020. My name is Heather Farley from the Lubin School of Business, and it's absolutely surreal to be here right now on Zoom. Because I can't believe that a little less than four years ago was our freshman orientation. It's where many of us made our first friend at Pace, including me. I met my first Pace friend during one of the many lectures of orientation where various professors and upperclassmen kept telling us that we needed to get grit. We became friends when, for maybe the seventh time in only a few hours, someone was telling us to get grit and quite frankly, we were tired of hearing that. My first friend's name is Brittany, and we actually ended up being roommates. Eventually, Brittany and I learned that even though that we were annoyed at how often we were told to get grit at orientation, that they were right. If we wanted to make it in New York City, we had to get grit. I'm sure the students here watching know what grit is, because for years it's been drilled into us. But for the family members out there, grit is a term coined by Angela Duckworth, who is a highly awarded scholar. She defines grit as passion and perseverance for long-term goals. It's about falling seven times, but getting up eight. It's about unabashedly believing in yourself and showing it with your actions. Brittany and I began to develop grit in our own separate ways starting in our freshman seminar. Our professors had us create a four-year plan called the PACE Path to map out exactly what we would do in order to get to where we wanted to be post-grad. And theoretically, sounds like a foolproof plan, just write out what you want to do post-grad and make steps for how to get there. Unfortunately, the reality was that half of us didn't know what we wanted to major in or what we were having for breakfast tomorrow, let alone where we wanted to be in four years. Our freshman seminars uh, professors tried to inspire us by asking what motivates us, what gets us up in the morning. Brittany said that she was inspired by music, so she looked to work at a record label. I said that I was inspired by money, so I looked to Wall Street. Brittany also said something else, though, that stuck with me throughout college. She said that she was motivated by happiness. Brittany knew that grit was not only about achieving goals, but cultivating happiness and memories along the way. 
So she decided to take one second videos of every single day to document her college experience. These one second snippets were meant to capture one happy moment a day, and then she would compile them into one huge video. I remember asking her one day why she continued to do it day after day. And she told me, whenever I'm down, I like to look at the most recent videos and remind myself that yes, maybe I am having a bad day, a bad week, or even a bad month. But if I look back on these videos, I remind myself that every day was worth it because one happy thing happened. And after that, she offered to show me the videos. I saw candid snippets of our friends out on a Friday at Nags and snippets of the next morning in the Pace Calf. I saw snippets of Brittany celebrating an A on a test, and I saw snippets of me celebrating a D after passing a really hard math class. Although the videos were only a second long, the sentiment did last forever. Brittany's videos taught me that even if the world is crashing around you, every day will have a happy moment. And even if it's just for a second, it makes a day worth it. At the end of our senior year, the world actually crashed. Our senior spring ended abruptly and a lot of us didn't get a chance to say goodbye to the place that we had called home for four years. We envisioned walking these halls after finals, properly saying goodbye to friends who would soon be moving across the country, saying goodbye to our favorite study spots where we would cram until 4 a.m. But mostly we at least envisioned being able to finish here. There was no way that the class of 2020 could have calculated this into our four-year plan. These times are really, really tough. There's a lot of uncertainty, a lot of anxiety, and a lot of fear. But something that's getting me through it is the sentiment of Britney's videos. I strive to find at least one happy thing a day throughout the pandemic, and I actually find a lot of them. At 7 p.m. every day, the city erupts in cheers for healthcare workers. And on my walks to the grocery store, I see volunteers running errands for the elderly who can't do it themselves. Animal rescue care centers actually have no more animals left because so many people signed up to foster during this time of need. I see so much goodness in a time filled with so much sadness, and it actually makes me hopeful for the class of 2020. Because of the pandemic, we will be graduating into a world completely different than the world that we knew when we were in college. But I know that we're prepared because for the past four years, we've learned how to get grit. For our entire college career, we've learned how to persevere when times get tough. We've learned how to step up to the plate and help our neighbor. And during the pandemic, it has shown. Pay students held online fundraisers for COVID-19 patients and made homemade masks for those in need. Student leaders adapted and held club meetings on Zoom and on Instagram, students shared self-care best practices for how to get through the, the quarantine. The pandemic has been the most trying time for the class of 2020, but when faced with adversity, the class of 2020 adapted and overcame. We have a lot of people to thank for being here today. I'd like to thank Pace University on behalf of the class of 2020 for allowing us to celebrate our achievements in a time where we were uncertain that we'd be able to do so. A little known fact is that Pace University is the number one private school in the nation for upward economic mobility which inherently means that right now we have a lot of graduates watching who come from low income areas who are gonna make it big one day. We have a lot of students watching who are first gen, including myself. Because we're the number one school for upward economic mobility, it means that a lot of us started from the bottom. It is especially important that people like us get the platform to celebrate our achievements. I'm thankful to Pace's administration for recognizing this. And it's one of many reasons that I'm Pace proud. Class of 20 has a lot of people to thank. On behalf of our graduates, I'd like to thank our families. Your unwavering support throughout this journey has allowed us to blossom, and we're forever thankful for that. I'd also like to thank our roommates, who acted as family away from family. My roommates, including Brittany, Bella, and Nikki, have become lifelong sisters to me. I'd also like to uh, thank the forever friends that we've made at Pace. At orientation, I'm sure we knew that we would make friends. But I don't think that anybody could have anticipated how close we would have gotten throughout these four years. Alex and Anissa, thank you for being my anchors for putting up with me and the endless laughs. I love you both. And lastly, I'd personally like to thank the class of 2020. Spending these last four years with you has been an honor. From all those nights at Mags to all those mornings in the Pace Calf, our time at Pace has been a movie, even though it had to be cut short. I'm so excited to see where you all go after graduation, and I'm confident you'll do amazing things. I know it because I know that we finally got grit. 
Thank you for your time, graduates. Godspeed. And now I'd like to send it over to our undergraduate student speaker from Pleasantville, Brent. Thanks, Heather. Welcome, President Krizlov, trustee, honored guests, officers of administration, faculty, family, and friends. And last but not least, welcome and congratulations to the class of 2020. We've made it. Despite being chased back into our homes by that which shall not be named, we have made it. I'm so proud to be here in person with all of you, even if it is virtually, as we stand at the end of this collective journey and approach the threshold of our individual ones. I use the word journey because if you think about it, our last four years at Pace University have not been all that different from any hero's journey. Just like any great success story, yours began with a call to adventure when you accepted the challenge to come to Pace. You crossed the threshold as you watched your parents drive away, feeling a little like a scared mouse dropped their new field. Yes, you were full of fear and excitement. Your imagination churned away like a turbine of what ifs. But before long, you had made too many friends. And those fears gave way to temptations. For example, choosing to go to late night parties with Alex at Kessel or to Polly's or to townhouse parties over working on that paper. The next morning, you found yourself in the abyss or the, or the belly of the whale with a few hours left to stand in what you had not yet started. Hunkered down in your dorm room like Dante in the Inferno, you bared your teeth, dug in, and worked your way out of hell. And when you completed that paper, a feeling of triumph percolated in your belly, feeling like Frodo looking over Mordor, now restored to order. Thus, you earned the stage of transformation and atonement. And each semester, you braved the return, each time getting that much stronger and that much closer to attaining the degree which has now become part of you. And look at us now, strong as love and armed to the hilt, standing victorious over the bones of all the challenges that we've had to face and conquer to get to this well-earned summit. Joseph Campbell once wrote, you enter the forest at the darkest point where there is no path. Where the there is a way or path, it is someone else's path. You are not on your own path if you follow someone else's way. You are not going to realize your potential. This quote is inspired by the Arthurian legend of the Knights of the Round Table. When King Arthur and his knights set out to find the Holy Grail, they each chose a spot in the woods that looked darkest to them. Each chose a way that was uncertain, shrouded in fear, and each chose a unique starting point. Today, we are like those knights of old. Now we need the will to do the work, to earn the courage, to be able to stand at that darkest starting point, to forge a path to our very own bliss. So follow that bliss of yours, no matter what. I say this with absolute urgency because I was a high school dropout. I refused the call of my own bliss for far too long. And believe me, you can pacify the guilt of a dream deferred in a litany of curious ways, but you'll never truly silence it. So those of you who want to be teachers, go out there and teach people to think. Those of you who want to be doctors or nurses, go out there and make people well. Those of you who want to be writers, Go out there and write the stories that will change this world. Go out there and make those dreams real because this pandemic will end and life will continue. I wanna take this time to give a special thank you to all of the administration, faculty and staff that encouraged us to reach our highest potentials. I would also like to give a special thank you to my lovely wife, Joyce, and to my parents who I could have never done this without. In fact, I think this is a good time for all of us to thank our parents, the administration, faculty and staff for all they have done to make this day possible. It has been my sincerest pleasure to share this experience at Pace University with all of you. Thank you. Good luck and God bless. And now I would like to welcome our graduate student speaker. Thank you so much, Brent. Fellow graduates, president, vice president, deans, faculty, family, and friends. I will begin my speech today with a quote from Lubin's Dean, Neil Braun. Life may challenge you and seem difficult at times. It is through these difficult times I need you to remember there is always free pizza outside classroom W404. End of quote. I'm kidding. This is not an actual quote from Dean Braun, but it's from the Instagram handle free food at pace. I promise you this is a real Instagram handle and my friend Orlando can attest to that. Shout out to you, Orlando. 
My name is Tandika Stevens Di Clementi. I am an international student from Guyana, the last of nine children, the second in my family to complete college and graduate school. I was raised by a single mom and this is my second master's degree. Today I wanna to talk to you about the international student experience, my experience and the lessons learned from it. I will not attempt to give you life lessons as I'm sure we have enough to go around this room. I'm confident some of us have had jobs, careers, marriages, childbirth, and even divorces. So I will not be sharing with you 10 steps to have a successful life. Remember that Instagram page I mentioned before? Well, thanks to that page, I got free lunch on the days I could not afford to buy any when I was working as a graduate assistant. Pace's motto of opportunitas has personal meaning for me. Opportunitas meant that a girl from one of the smallest countries in South America had the chance to sit on a panel and speak to an audience that included the university's president and an assemblywoman from the great state of New York about the international student experience. Opportunitas also meant that same girl would have an audience via the university's radio so she could give a platform to international students who wanted to talk about their culture. The International Experience radio show with Tandika was a way for me to introduce us to the PACE community. International students contributed $44.7 billion in 2018 to the U.S. economy. And according to the Chicago Tribune, we pay higher tuition costs that offset costs for domestic admissions and our high test scores boost college rankings. You're welcome. I wanted to use my radio show as a platform to show that we are more than these statistics, and I did. Opportunitas also meant I had the liberty to speak freely even when it was for the difficult things, like calling OSA to ensure my classes were not dropped because my tuition was not paid. Dropped classes for an international student can lead to deportation, and I continually lived with this fear. There was a viral meme going around a few years ago that suggested international students eat Gucci branded breakfast cereals and drove Lamborghinis. I'm sure many of you saw this meme. The BBC wrote an article about that meme. To quote that article, but the truth is that the vast majority of the 400,000 international students in the UK struggle to get enough money to come and fulfill their dreams, usually it's the bank of mom and dad who are paying, and sometimes it's the whole family's life savings that are put into it, end of quote. The same rings true for students here across the pond. For those of us with no bank of mom and dad and no family life savings, we have succeeded in obtaining government scholarships, graduate assistantships, and limited 20 hour a week jobs. It is for this reason we value the education we came to receive at PACE even more, and why we spoke up when we wanted professors to expand more. International students face extraordinary challenges as it relates to employment in general. To complicate things further, you may hope and pray that a company will hire you after you graduate so that you too can experience the American dream, but companies are reluctant to spend money on a lottery system. I believe universities can do more in this regard by hiring the students they can. My experience here at Pace was not perfect, but it was valuable to reiterate the following. One, always speak your truth. It is the only way you will be heard. Two, take advantage of every opportunity that is presented to you. Three, be aware that everything is not always as it appears and ask questions when you're unsure about something. And finally, four, always look for free food before buying lunch. <laughs> Good luck and congratulations to you all. Thank you to all of our student speakers for their inspiring words. It is now my great pleasure to describe our awards for outstanding students who have excelled in scholarship, research, professional development, and service. Each of these extraordinary graduates is a personification of PACE's mission and values. Congratulations to all. 
The Scholastic Achievement Award is presented in recognition of excellence in scholarship, effectiveness in class discussion, research, and outstanding performance in a baccalaureate degree program. Students receiving the award must have completed a minimum of 60 credits at PACE and be qualified at least for graduation cum laude. The Outstanding Student of the Year is a Graduate University Award presented in recognition of scholarship and exceptional dedication to the ideals of their school in a graduate degree program. The Outstanding Academic Achievement Award is given for the highest cumulative quality grade point average, CQPA. The award for outstanding achievement and professional potential goes to a student who has demonstrated academic and professional qualities during the course of study. The Outstanding Perseverance Award in Health Science is presented to a student who has overcome obstacles to complete the health science program. Latin honors are awarded to bachelor's degree students for high scholastic achievement as follows. Summa cum laude has a final CQPA of 3.85 to 4.0. Magna cum laude has a final CQPA of 3.65 to 384. Cum Laude has a final CQPA of 3.5 to 364. Graduation with distinction honors are specific to students who have completed 32 to 59 credits at Pace University and are therefore not eligible for Latin honors. These students have earned a bachelor's degree with a final CQPA of 3.50. The Pi Alpha Honor Society Award recognizes significant academic achievement, leadership, research, community and professional service, and the encouragement of a high standard of character and conduct among physician assistant students and graduates. The physician assistant Pleasantville Valedictorian has the highest with the highest CQPA and Salutatorian has the second highest CQPA. The Career Services Award is presented to a health science student this year and recognizes outstanding students who have participated in one or more of the university's experiential education programs, including internships, clinical rotations, or student teaching. Award recipients are nominated by faculty or self-nominate for their personal achievement, contributions, demonstrated personal or professional growth, leadership development, and academic record. The American Nurses Association New York Future Leader Award is presented to a graduating nursing senior who made significant contributions to the overall excellence of the school, sets a healthy example and promotes a healthy lifestyle, creates a positive working environment, embodies the ethics and values of nursing, demonstrates a clear sense of the direction for the nursing career and demonstrates leadership by preparing, motivating, and impacting other students as leaders, mentoring fellow students and promoting activity in nursing organization. Congratulations again to all of our award winners. Hello, I'm Vania Quinones, the Provost of Pace University. And today I have the privilege of announcing the winners of our university-wide awards. The first award, the Trustees Award is presented to the graduating student whose academic accomplishments and positive contribution to the university life and who exemplify the highest level of achievement for an undergrad. I am pleased to present Jamie Rizzo for the New York City Campus Award and Richard Harris for the Pleasantville Campus Award with the 2020 Trustees Award. The second award is the Community Service Award. It's presented to the graduate student whose contribution to the university community and our surrounding communities most admirably embody the value of social responsibility. I am pleased to present Soon Yoon Young from the New York City campus and Ashley Ayosa from the Pleasantville campus with the 2020 Community Service Awards. 
Congratulations to the award winners and to the school and college award winners for your impressive accomplishment. And to all of you, our graduates, congratulations. I know this semester has been challenging, but I also know that you are resilient. You are graduating today because of your resilience and your perseverance and your ability to succeed through extraordinary times. This in part is what pays teach you. I am proud of you for remaining focused and finishing strong. I am proud of your persistence and I know that it will continue to pay off. Please join me on thanking your faculty and staff who worked tirelessly during your tenure at PACE and especially this semester. They are resilient too, and they adapted pretty quickly for you to be able to complete your work. I've been thinking about what is the impact of this pandemic on your last year and on the impact that it will have on your future. In a recent article, Rebo Shen wrote, that success and winning in life depends on grasping the power of reflection. That deep reflection empowers us to gain self-awareness and to improve and become better humans. In other words, as the great educator John Dewey said, we don't learn from experience. We learn from reflecting on those experiences. And so, I know you don't want any more homework ever, but I'm gonna give you a final homework from PACE. And my final assignment to you is to reflect in the lessons learned during your journey at PACE. And more important, to reflect on your incredible accomplishment as we navigate through this pandemic, as today and in your future. Because the world is changing in front of us, you did it through these circumstances. Despite all the obstacles, you are graduating today. Reflect on how you were able to do that. I think that is because you're adaptable, because you're powerful, because you're resilient. And I think you learned that through us at PACE. And reflecting on what led you to that great self-awareness, you will be continue to grow and succeed on your future. So PACE class of 2020. Remember opportunitas, opportunity, which is the essence of your education at PACE. You said yes to opportunities and you seek those opportunities. Continue to doing that. Those opportunities have made you, that you had here at PACE, is what make you powerful. The world needs new ideas. Your actions, your bravery, your power. Reflect on that and always look to be a better version of who you were yesterday. You are opportunitas in action. You are PACE. And so I want to congratulate you. And I want to thank all the members of your family and friends who supported you through your journey at PACE. My hope and wishes are that you, your family and friends are safe and healthy. And I want to finish with the great words from Ellie from Legally Blonde, who say, you did it. So be proud of yourself. Congratulations to the class 2020. Now I have the best privilege of introducing our president, Marvin Crislo. Hello, Pace University class of 2020. Congratulations. You have accomplished so much and you did it over these last few months in an extraordinary situation that made your task even more challenging. You have earned your diplomas through intelligence, persistence, determination, and especially resilience. You've excelled in your classrooms, in your labs, in jobs, internships, practica, service, performance, and you've made friends and mentors in this extraordinary community we call Pace University. I am so happy for all you have achieved, and I'm so excited to see the future ahead of you. I want to take a moment to congratulate your parents and families. These are the people who've been your biggest boosters your entire lives. 
They have supported you through your time at PACE and even more than anyone would have expected through these last few months. Parents and families, thank you for entrusting us with these graduates. Today is your accomplishment too. I also wanna thank our dedicated faculty. These last two months have been no easier for you than they have been for our students. Thank you for your hard work. Thank you for your adaptability and thank you for your commitment to helping these graduates get across the finish line. For all of us, this period has been tough, really tough. I know that all of you and your families have been touched by the pandemic and the response to it. I know some of you have suffered loss in your family. We grieve together with you, and I ask that everyone join me in a moment of silence for those we have lost. Thank you. As tough as these last few months have been, I know that this period should not and will not define your college education or your graduate school experience. You've spent several years with us here at PACE and you learned so much both inside and outside the classroom. You mastered your areas of study and you grew as people. When you look back at your time at PACE, I hope you will remember the totality of your experience, not only the strange time we're currently living through. But I wanna talk for a moment about this tough time and the lessons we can draw from it. First, we learned once again, just how small the world is in ways both good and not so good. The world economy and the world's health flow together. Diseases travel, but so do good people, goodwill, kindness, and humanity. Every night at seven o'clock, I join countless New Yorkers to help clap, whistle, and cheer for the essential workers who are helping us get through these times. I know that many of you and your families are among those heroes. If we were together in one room, I would ask you to join me in applauding all our heroes, all our essential workers. Thank you. Second, we learned that technology can keep us together, even in times of crisis. Many of us as parents have long worried about too much screen time. Right now, screens have been our saviors. Technology has enabled us to meet individually and in classes, to conduct business and to receive help in many ways. It's not always easy, but it's working. That's an opportunity for you, the next generation of leaders, to find a new way forward. You can take this technology, join it with a strong sense of mission, and help tackle some of the world's most pressing problems. Finally, we've learned how vulnerable we all are and how much we can accomplish together. We've been deeply challenged and we've also rediscovered our common humanity. We've relearned the values of empathy, kindness, and community. I encourage you to use the good we've seen to help us tackle the bad. Remember the stranger who is patient or kind, the way we've all worked together, and use that to further the greater good. For example, we've seen the structural inequities that are leaving the most vulnerable among us shouldering the greatest burden. And we know that's not right. It is up to you to help tackle this inequity. No doubt you have drawn other lessons from this experience too. I'm sure you will continue to ruminate on what it has meant as you plot out your life and your direction. Ultimately, that is the purpose of education, to push us to ask questions and to seek answers to the, to the deepest and most difficult problems. Some of you will do that in business, in marketing and finance. Others will do it in science, health or technology, some in law and justice, others in the arts and humanities. Whatever you do, you will take what you've learned at pace, you will take what you've learned through this crisis, and you will keep those lessons with you throughout your lives and your careers. I know this is a scary time to be launching a career. Another lesson of the last few months, as one student put it to me, is that tomorrow is not guaranteed. That is true. It is also a reminder that this is not forever. Things will change and get better. You need to be flexible and adaptable. There are jobs to be found, even if they're not necessarily the jobs you expected. Be creative. Thank, 
think about how to adjust. Make tomorrow work for you. And here's my final request. Remember the good times you've had at Pace University, the friends and mentors you found, the relationships you built, the experiences you treasured. You can and will make a difference in the world, each one of you. You will use your Pace education to create a better and stronger world for all of us. I am so proud of you, and we all look forward to seeing you in person as soon as we can. Congratulations, good luck, and please remember to stay in touch with Pace University. And now, for the most important part of this celebration, I'm very pleased to introduce the chair of our Board of Trustees, Mark Veska, for the conferral of your degrees. Hello, Pace Class of 2020. It's now time for the moment you've been waiting for, the conferral of your degrees. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the State of New York and with concurrence of the Pace University Board of Trustees, I confer upon each of you, as approved by the faculty of your college or school, the appropriate degree and course with all rights and responsibilities thereunto. You are now officially Pace graduates. Congratulations. Class of 2020, you are now Pace University graduates. Congratulations. We can't wait to see you at an on-campus commencement soon. Have a wonderful day. You have earned the right to celebrate. But before you go, here are some closing words of inspiration. Hi, this is New York State Senator Pete Harcum. Wishing the Pace University class of 2020 congratulations on your graduation. This is a major milestone. Unfortunately, you're graduating into the most uncertain times in modern history. Fortunately for you, Pace University has prepared you with a world-class education. Your country needs you and your community needs you. And I challenge you to put your skills to good use in rebuilding our economy as we move forward through this pandemic. So congratulations and best of luck in your future endeavors. Hi, I'm George Latimer, Westchester County Executive, and we want to extend congratulations for all of you as graduates of Pace University. This has been a spring like no other, and in many ways you may have missed out on some of the normal enjoyment of a graduation year. But your exams are behind you, your courses are behind you, and you have earned your degree. And that degree is an accomplishment that will stay with you for the rest of your life. It defines you as an individual that you could tackle something and achieve, and we celebrate that achievement. We wish you the very best in the years to come. Congratulations. Hello to Pace University. This is Senator Chuck Schumer, and it's my honor to address the faculty and staff, family and friends of the graduates, but most of all, you, the class of 2020. Now, I'm really sorry I can't join you in person as I do just about every year, but I'm grateful that modern technology allows us to still be connected on this very special day. As we all know, these are truly difficult times, perhaps more difficult than most of us have ever experienced. There are two aspects of this pandemic that make things all the more challenging. The first is our uncertainty, our lack of knowledge. How do we get the virus? How do we spread it? How does it affect different people differently? When will we have an effective antiviral medication? When will we have an effective max vaccine? And most of all, how soon can we get back to normal? And the second aspect of this virus that is just as bad is that we have to isolate ourselves. We are New Yorkers. During times of trouble, we like to come together and embrace each other. After 9-11, I stood with President Bush on the pile. There were no partisan divisions. We came together as Americans and as New Yorkers. After Sandy, I walked the streets and beaches of New York City and Long Island and literally hugged people. But we can't do that now. We have to remain isolated. So the challenges of this moment are truly unique. But so has been our collective response. The fact that we're all finding new ways to do things, like celebrating this graduation virtually, just goes to show you that New Yorkers won't let anything, anything, stop us from honoring what's so important in life. Now, first, I'd like to say a few words to the parents. Nothing, nothing will take away your decades of hard work raising your children, for which they and all of us are so very grateful. And while this day may be tempered by worries about the future, 
at least there's one silver lining. You're not seated way back in the balcony. You get to sit next to your son or daughter and give them a hug as they receive a diploma and become an adult before your very eyes. Congratulations to the moms and dads. And one more word of thanks. Today, as we're celebrating right now, there are men and women all across the state and nation who are serving on the front lines, risking their lives in the battle against the coronavirus. Doctors, nurses, healthcare workers, pharmacists, ambulance drivers, people who stack the food in the supermarkets and stand behind the counters at pharmacies, police officers, firefighters, and so many more. These people are our heroes, and I'm working to create a COVID-19 Heroes Fund which would provide pandemic premium pay to all essential workers. Let's have a virtual round of applause for them. And now to the class of 2020. I know this may not be what you pictured even a few months ago, but today is still your day. All of your hard work has earned you a degree from a fine institution of higher learning, and nothing can take that away from you. Right now, it may feel like the future is a dark hole, but what has been true throughout history is just as true today. That even in times of difficulty, there are always new opportunities, new ways of thinking, doing things in a better way. So my message to the class of 2020 is simple. It's natural to fear the unknown, but don't let the harshness of this current moment prevent you from seizing opportunities. They're out there. And don't forget you have incredible assets college degree from a fine institution and loving families who will have your back through thick and thin. Our society will overcome this pandemic and so will you. And when the worst is over, we'll need your help to rebuild our country even stronger than it was before. You are our future leaders and we faith in you. So to the graduates, I say once again, congratulations. Good luck. Godspeed.